Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing Takancha T1 trailer wiring harness on a 2022 Mazda CX-30. If you plan on towing a trailer or if you have accessories with lights on them, having a four pole wiring is going to allow you to have your light signals, including your running lights, your brake lights and turn signals, transfer to the trailer or accessories, letting the people behind you know what you're doing and it's gonna keep you safe and legal. Now this is a pretty easy way to get wiring in because it snaps into factory connections of your taillights and just kind of jumpers in. Now with that, you are gonna to need to run a power wire up to the battery and that's kind of where it gets a little bit tricky of just going underneath the car to run it. But overall, the installation is fairly easy and the great part about this is even though you're plugging into your factory wiring, it's module protected. So if you ever have a back feed from your trailer, it's not gonna fry any of the lights on your on your OEM harness so that's really nice you get a little peace of mind there and there's also a fuse to keep it protected as well so as far as the installation I'm going to walk you through every step to make sure that you get yours installed to begin our installation you're going to want to open up your hatch and pull all your cargo covers out and that way you can get to this portion here because we're going to be pulling off our scuff panel and to give us a little bit more room to do that we're going to want to remove this styrofoam uh, we have all of our spare tools in it. This whole thing comes out as one. But before we do that, if you have a powered factory subwoofer in your spare tire, you're gonna want to separate that by just pushing this clip here, get that to pop out, and then we should be able to lift this entire section here out. Now the scuff panel is pretty easy to get out. You're just gonna wanna grab on the bottom side here and just kind of pull straight up. There's gonna be some clips that just kind of snap it into place. So just kind of work your way. Don't put too much pressure. And then this should come out pretty easily. So uh, we'll set this aside for now. Now holding on to our wiring harness, you're gonna see that these plugs are what are going to tie into our taillight. So we're gonna be looking for plugs that look almost identical to these. Um, they're just gonna snap into those OEM connectors. So in order to gain access to those, they're gonna be tucked back here. We're gonna to need to remove the side here. So we'll start, there's gonna be this plastic bracket down here. Uh, there's two plastic push pins. So just with like a small flat head, just kind of pry on that center portion and the rest of it should come with it. So we'll get these two. And then there's also this little luggage hook here. Uh, just fold that down and then this cap will come off so you can take your flathead and just lightly pry on that or even a fingernail should do it if you can get in there. Pop that up and that's gonna have a 10 millimeter screw there. So we'll go ahead and get that removed. And all of your hardware, make sure you keep this in a nice organized spot. It's gonna make it a lot easier to get this back together. And this just has a plastic kind of a pin here that just holds it in place. So with that, we can start to pull this back and that's gonna give us access to where that wire is. But as we get here, this plastic portion is holding it back a little bit. So there's gonna be some plastic clips along here. We don't need to take the whole thing off, but just separate this back far enough and that's gonna give us access to another plastic push pin right here. So I'll go ahead and get this one taken out as well. And then this should peel back enough for us to find our wiring. Now we'll see that there's a plastic piece here as well with a plastic push pin down here by the floorboard. So we'll just kind of get this pried up as well. Now this whole black plastic section is gonna come out. Um, so you can see this one can slide to unhinge here and then this needs to slide up. So uh, two ways to do this, you can push it and get it to work uh, its way out. Or if you need to, you can also pry on the white plastic tab just kind of underneath it and get that to separate. So just either way, be careful. Uh, you don't wanna break these. So this one actually came out with it, which is totally fine. Just make sure you have uh, eyes on both of those clips and we'll set this aside for now. And then we're gonna go ahead and look for that plug that's gonna correspond to our harness. 
Now I found our clip that we're going to be unplugging here to tie into and it's just kind of tucked right up there. So it's got a little uh, pin here or a little clip. So we'll just push that and then get our wire separated. And with that separated, we can grab our wiring harness and you're gonna see it matches up directly to these. So pretty easy, it just ties into uh, the plug. So I have our brown and yellow wiring. So we'll go ahead and just make our connections here on the clip. The other side's gonna go into the other factory side. And now we can unbundle our wiring here and we're gonna just run our red and green wire over where we had that threshold and the wires are gonna kinda of just hide under there. And then we're gonna remove all the same panels on the passenger side and look for a similar clip and get this one plugged in. And now on our passenger side, it's gonna be a little bit different location. It's actually mounted here um, on the frame. So uh, same thing, just separate that and we'll get our wiring plugged in. Now you're going to want to grab your white wire and this is just going to be our ground and it already has the ring terminal attached so I was looking for a factory ground to mount this to but uh, really this one right here either one is going to be a good option. Now uh, I'm going to just kind of route my wire up kind of back through here to keep everything nice and tight uh, and tucked away. I'll just go ahead and remove this which is going to be a 10 mil. And then we'll just take our ring terminal and get that mounted back up. Now there is a, a flat side to the ring terminal. You can see that'll sit a little bit flush. Make sure that that's facing towards the metal so it gets a nice good contact. And then we'll just tighten this back down. Now you're going to want to grab the black wire and you can see it's already been stripped back and that's going to be our power wire which we're going to attach to this included power um, wire to run up to the battery. So it's easy to make the connection uh, while it's you know loose here so you don't want to zip tie everything up. It's just going to make it easier to have that and then we'll be passing this through a grommet. And to make this connection it has an included butt connector. Uh, we'll just strip this back just a bit. and. We'll just make sure to crimp this down good. And with all electrical connections, just make sure that after you make a crimp that you kind of give it a quick tug just to make sure that it's not gonna become loose over time. You don't want to trace a, you know, a faulty wiring just because it's slightly loose. So just make sure it's nice and crimped down. So I'm going to go ahead and I will get this run through and all the way up to the engine bay or close to it and then I'll show you how I did it. Now I've passed our power wire through our grommet and I just poked a hole through it using a punch. Uh, that way we could feed the wire through and it's going to still have a nice seal. If you want to later you can go back and use some black silicone to fill it but I don't think it's necessary. And it's just located right below, uh, directly below where our plugs were up top. So just route that wire through and then I'm gonna lift up our vehicle and I'll show you the path that I took to get up to the engine bay. So once I pass that wire through the grommet, I just zip tied it up using the exhaust hanger. Um, that way it just stays away from the exhaust. And the main thing is you wanna make sure that we're not hitting any suspension, moving parts or anything hot. So using factory mount points for wires or even hard lines is generally a pretty good rule of thumb. So I've just kind of routed mine over, trying to make my way over to the side panel. And there is some suspension here where the arm's attached, so just make sure that it's not gonna get pinched in here. But this side panel I was able to remove, there's just a series of 10 millimeter nuts and plastic clips. And that way you don't have to be completely under the vehicle. You can just simply pass it underneath these body trays. And as long as it's behind the hardware, it's gonna hold it in place and keep it safe. Now once I made it up to this point, what I'm going to have to do is route this up to the engine bay. So I use spare airline tube that we have here. You're going to want to get creative and use something to pass down the engine bay. That way you can attach it to the wire and pull it up. So I removed the heat shield just to kind of make it a little bit easier to see, but I think you can omit doing that. Uh, as long as you can pass that down, you have some access up here. Just be careful if you know, your exhaust is hot, but we'll just route that down from up top tape that up and then I'm gonna hop up in the engine bay, pull this up and that should get our wire pulled up to the battery.
Now using my pull wire, I was able to pull this up through the engine bay and we have our positive terminal here that we're gonna wanna tie on to. So I'll just pop this cap here and it should be a 10 millimeter. So I'll go ahead and get that. But also we have an extra length of wire here and we're gonna still be attaching a fuse holder. So I'll go ahead and cut the excess power wire. So we're gonna go ahead and get our fuse holder attached to our power wire. And you can go ahead and just kind of make a cut wherever on this loop. And then I'm going to just strip back one end here. And then we're also going to strip back the end on this power wire. And then using the supplied butt connector, we'll go ahead and get these attached. And then on the other end of our fuse holder, we'll strip that back and we're gonna put our ring terminal that was supplied in the kit as well. Now, very important, don't have your fuse in here until we make our connection to the positive terminal. With my 10 millimeter wrench, I just loosen this up here. Now, you can see this doesn't exactly want to come out. You can use the larger uh, 13 millimeter and attach it to that positive terminal if you want. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. That way I can route this on this side and this cap will still be able to close. So what I'm gonna do is just make a slight cut in our ring terminal here. Just wide enough to fit on that stud. And then once we have that in place, we can go ahead and get that tightened back down. And again, I did this to kind of make sure that this closes back down. So you can see I still have my clearance here. Now, if you route it uh, to the other one, or if you have this a little off center, you may need to trim this in order for this to close down. You can also bend the ring terminal just a little bit, um, but just make sure that you are able to close this. And then from here, we'll just take our fuse and we'll pop this in place. Now we can go back and zip tie this up if you wanna make it a little bit cleaner, but next thing we need to do is test to make sure that it's working. And this is uh, available here at E-Trailer. It's really nice because it keeps it specific to the vehicle. Uh, the other way that you'd wanna test is hooking up to your trailer, have someone either run the cycle or have them stand behind the trailer. And just as you go through the return signals, running lights and brake lights, make sure that the lights go accordingly. So I'll hop in the vehicle and we'll run through it. So now we're gonna start, we'll turn on our running lights. Next, we'll do our left turn signal, then our right turn signal, and then finally our brakes. Now, before we get our panels back on, you're gonna to wanna to zip tie up any loose wires. And along here, you can just use this factory wire to zip tie that up and that'll be hidden. Now, as far as mounting your module, uh, the double-sided tape that's included in the kit, I just stuck onto the bottom of our module, pressed it here where it's nice and flat, and then I have the hole right here in this large hole. I was able to zip tie that up, and that's gonna hold that in there for the lifespan of the trailer wiring. So your four-pole wiring is actually gonna live inside the vehicle, so you can route this kind of over by the spare tire. That way, you'll have quick access to it, and the rest of the wires, I'll just go ahead, get these all cleaned up, and then we'll get our panels in in the reverse order that we took them off. Now with everything back in place, I will say, remember to get your subwoofer plugged back in if you have that factory sub. And our wiring here is going to live inside the vehicle. So you can just kind of tuck this back in the storage if you want, and then it'll be out of sight, out of mind until you need to tow. And when you are ready to tow, pretty easy to just drape this over our threshold. And the weather stripping here will be enough cushion to where it's not gonna damage the wire and you'll be able to drape this down to be able to hook up to your trailer. So, and that's pretty much the basics of it and the end of the installation. So hopefully this helps you get your four pole installed. And that was a look and installation of the Takancha T1 trailer wiring harness on a 2022 Mazda CX-30.